Hey guys, I'm trying to hit 100k subscribers by the end of the year, and I think we can get there with your help, so please subscribe, it would honestly mean a lot to me. Now, let's get right into the stories. Story 1. My brother just tried to propose to my fiancé in front of our whole family to prove she still had feelings for him, and I'm scared she might have second thoughts about marrying me because of this. My, 28 male, brother Mark, 26 male, used to date my fiancé Jen, 26 female, a year ago. For context, they dated back in August 2022. They were only together for a month before he broke things off with her because he was bored of being in a relationship and never really wanted to settle down anyway. At the time they were dating I was in a different state so I had no idea he even had a girlfriend and I had no idea who Jen was until I met her. Jen and I met at a bar when I moved back in October and hit it off really well. She was easily the most beautiful and intelligent woman I ever met and we met up a few times more before we made it official. Fast forward to December and I finally bring her up to my family and propose them meeting her at Christmas. They knew I was in a relationship but I'm not the most open about my personal life so I kept details about her to a minimum until I knew how serious we really were. My parents asked to see pictures and they started passing my phone around the dinner table. Mark saw it and blew up calling me a shit brother for dating his ex-girlfriend and he demanded I break it off with her. I refused. When I asked Jen about it, she confirmed they dated and gave me the details about their breakup. It took a few weeks but eventually Mark stopped bringing up me dating his ex and I thought he was over it. On Jen's birthday this year, I took her out to a fancy dinner with both of our families and her closest friends and I asked her to marry me. Mark flipped once again and blew up about me proposing to her, which me and my sisters immediately shut down. The incident happened this past weekend. Mark had been pretty quiet about the whole thing for the last two months. I didn't see him much and figured he went low contact with me which I had no problem with, then he invited me and Jen for family dinner at his apartment with my parents and sisters. I thought it was weird but my parents and sisters were also going so we agreed to go. The dinner was nice, nothing too fancy, and we moved to the living room to talk. About 30 minutes into normal conversation Mark stood up and told us he had an announcement. He made a long speech about being happy to have his family around for his big moment then got on one knee and pulled out this cheap ring while asking Jen to marry him. Jen was confused and obviously uncomfortable and demanded that he put it away and stand up. My dad tried to make a grab for Mark but I got to him first and punched him. I won't repeat most of it, mostly because I was too angry to even listen to most of it, but he said something along the lines of wanting to show me that Jen wasn't really into me and just wanted to get back at him. Before it could get worse my parents rushed me out and promised to talk to him. It's been a few days since it happened and I'm still pissed off. I don't know what to do at this point. I'm scared Jen might have second thoughts marrying me because of this. Any advice? Edit to add later that day. First, thanks for reading and responding. I want to clarify a few things that I saw in the comments. 1. Jan and I are newly engaged. It was one of those feelings where we both knew we were in it for the long run. As fast as it is, I'm sure about her. 2. When we met, I was the one who approached her, not the other way around. Whether she knew or had suspicions of us being related I don't know. I asked after finding out they dated and she says she had no idea. I didn't have a reason to doubt that, but I can admit this, seemingly, overreaction on Mark's part does raise red flags. 3. I had no idea she and Mark dated when I met her. Mark and I aren't close at all. We used to be but as we grew up we drifted and talked less and less. Before I moved back, we didn't really speak much aside from special days like his or my birthday. Jen knew of my family but not much until I decided I was ready to introduce them to her. When she and Mark met, again, I didn't get a sense of any residual feelings on either part. She didn't treat him like a stranger but she also wasn't overly affectionate with him either. 4. I was told this was a relationship that lasted a month. I didn't think I needed permission from Mark to ask her to marry me, but maybe that was wrong of me. I'm not sure. That being said, I plan to talk to Mark this weekend to lay everything out on the table and figure out what's up. I never asked for his side of their relationship, which is my fault for not doing my due diligence. Update two days later, I called Mark and asked him to meet up with me at my place to talk. I told him I would prefer Jen to be around for the talk as well, but I was cool with it if he didn't want her there. He agreed to talk to both of us and showed up at my place around noon today. It was pretty quiet for a few minutes before I started the conversation. I apologized for not warning him I would be proposing to Jen, and I apologized for hitting him. He said it was whatever but he appreciated the apology. I told him what Jen had said about the relationship and breakup when I asked her about it and I asked him to confirm if it was true. I pretty much said that his reaction throughout the his whole thing has been extreme and I wanted to make sure I wasn't misunderstanding their relationship or downplaying how serious they were. He confirmed that they only dated for a few weeks and he broke up with her because he lost interest. Jen asked if he was acting like this because he still had feelings or regrets about ending things with her. He said he could admit he thought she was more attractive than when he last saw her, but there weren't any feelings or regrets. He said he just didn't like seeing a girl he dated, even if it was short term, with his older brother and as a man I shouldn't have violated him by pursuing things with his ex. I reminded him that I had no idea they dated so it wasn't like I consciously did this knowing their history together. He shrugged me off and said it didn't matter, I still should have broken it off. He was adamant that if the roles were reversed he would have done the same thing, which I highly doubt. I asked him why he proposed to her if he didn't have any lingering feelings. Basically, to sum it up, 
he was talking about it to one of his buddies who was around when Mark and Jen dated and the guy put the idea in his head that maybe Jen knew from the start that we were related and was doing this to get back at him considering Jen had been hung up on him after they ended. He and his friend thought it would be a good idea to test it and see if they were right, so he came up with the idea to propose and see if she dumped me for him. Jen asked him to elaborate on why he thought she was hung up on him and he told her that he heard she was asking about him following the breakup and still hanging out at the places they used to go to, so it was a valid assumption. Then for her to pop up randomly with his brother affirmed his suspicions. Jen told him she'd only asked about him once following the breakup and she'd been hanging out at those places with friends before they started dating and she wouldn't avoid them because of a breakup. She also told him she was offended at the idea that she would go as low as to pursue me, just to get back at him. He shrugged and gave her a half apology but said she had to see it from his point of view. He asked her if she really didn't know and she told him that she didn't see the resemblance in us until we were in the same room and we act nothing alike so it never crossed her mind and he said okay. That pretty much wrapped up the conversation. He did tell me before he left that I could take back his invite to the wedding because he can't bring himself to support our relationship knowing he used to date her. I told him he didn't have to worry about that as he was most likely going to be uninvited anyway. It's been a few hours since our talk and I do feel better. My parents aren't too happy about him being uninvited but they understood that it was a mutual decision and probably for the best. My sisters told me they knew he didn't have a good reason for being a jerk and they don't blame me for not wanting him at the wedding. As of now, I'm going to limit contact with Mark and I doubt he'll reach out to me anytime soon either. Once again, I want to thank everyone for reading and commenting and if anything significant happens, I'll update again. Second update two months later, so I've been low contact with Mark since our last conversation. I haven't called him and he hasn't called me, and our only interactions have been in family settings. As it stands, my mom is now upset that Mark is still uninvited for my wedding. It started with a comment made during my younger sister Sophie's birthday, 22 female. Her boyfriend of, I think, 4 years proposed to her at the end of the night and we sat around talking about what she envisioned for her dream wedding. She talked a bit about wanting a destination wedding and her ideas for the cake and dress then she said something along the lines of Teddy I know Mark's banned from your wedding but you won't care if he comes to mine right? I laughed it off and told her I can't get mad about her guest list even if I wanted to. My mom gave me this weird look and asked if Mark was still not invited to my wedding. I told her yes and she got irritated. She told me she thought I was joking and said I was being unreasonable to go through with banning him from the wedding since he's family. She accused me of holding a grudge just to be petty. I reminded her that he and I agreed on him not coming. I then told her that this wasn't the time to talk about my wedding since the day was about Sophie and if Mark or her want to talk about my wedding they can call me another time. Sophie laid into my mom a bit about trying to make her special day about Mark and my mom dropped the issue. For those of you who might be wondering, Mark wasn't at Sophie's party because he apparently had to work and couldn't make it. A few days later, my mom stopped by my house and said she wanted to discuss my wedding. She asked me why I was so adamant about Mark not coming to my wedding. She said that I shouldn't be so insecure about Mark and Jen's previous relationship and that uninviting him was a step too far. I told her that Mark and I mutually agreed on him not coming to the wedding and he can come to me about it himself if he has a problem with it. We got into an argument and she said that if I wasn't going to re-invite Mark then she would not be coming either because I'm ostracizing her son. I shrugged and told her if that's what she wants then she can toss her invite in the trash because I won't beg her to be there. She asked me if I would really be okay with her not attending and I told her it wouldn't be the first time she missed an event of mine because of Mark. She said I was being an offer throwing her past mistakes in her face and she stormed out. I then started getting messages and phone calls from her and a few family members about the whole situation saying I was in the wrong and urging me to invite Mark just to keep the peace. Jen's also been getting messages from my mom asking her to talk to me and get me to change my mind but to my knowledge she hasn't been responding. So far, most of my mom's side of the family are standing in solidarity with her and not attending while my dad and his side of the family which is only my aunt and uncle and their two kids, agree with me and are still coming. My sisters are also still coming to the wedding and of course Jen's family too. Also, I talked to Mark about it and asked him if he had a problem with not having an invite. He said he uninvited himself in the first place and he doesn't get why they're making a big deal because he still doesn't want to go. He told me to leave him out of the fighting because he's not involved and he says he'd tell her the same. As of now, I'm back to being low contact with my mom but my dad and I are still on decent terms. I'm still deciding on whether I'll reinvite my mom and her family. Should they change their mind about the boycott, but the chances are low and I told my dad this too which he understands. For now, Jan and I started looking into downsizing the venue since the guest list is significantly smaller. Update 3, my mom is uninvited from the wedding indefinitely. About two weeks after she decided to not come to the wedding, she came stopped by and said she wanted to clear the air and talk about everything. We agreed and invited her in to join us for dinner. Jan made her a plate of food and I asked her if she was still planning on not coming to the wedding. She said that while she wants to, she can't get over me not inviting Mark because of a simple mistake. I reminded her that his simple mistake was proposing to my fiancé with me sitting less than three feet away from him and she said it was just a joke. Jen asked her why she wanted to talk if she was maintaining the same stance on Mark coming to the wedding. She said she wanted to talk to Jen and she was hoping Jen would hear her out and talk me into inviting Mark again. She apparently assumed I was at work and she'd be able to catch her alone. Jen politely told her that she understood her thought process but she wouldn't have had that conversation anyway without me present since this is about my brother.
My mom made a comment somewhere in the lines of Jen being spineless and unable to have a conversation without me thinking for her which started a pretty heated back and forth between the three of us before Jen told her to get out. She got up and started walking towards the door and my mom followed her still screaming at her. By this point she's yelling about her tearing our family apart. While Jen was unlocking the front door my mom grabbed her hair and pulled her to the ground still screaming. She hit her and tried to claw her face and I dragged her off of her and threw her outside. She banged on the door for a few minutes while I made sure Jen was okay before she left and called the both of us repeatedly. When I was sure Jen was okay I texted my mom and told her not to bother reaching out again because we'll never speak to her again. I called my dad and sisters and told them what happened too. My dad was surprised and tried to make excuses, saying she'd been stressed about this whole situation for a while. My sisters say they knew she'd snap eventually since she's always been a crazy beach and they said they'd come make sure Jen is okay. I asked Jen if she wanted to press charges but she declined and said she only wanted to cut contact with her for good. I told that part was obvious but she should still talk to the police since she was physically assaulted but she doesn't want my mom to get arrested. My sisters and Jen's mom came by to comfort her thankfully so she's doing okay. My mom is blocked on everything until Jen says otherwise. I genuinely don't know what to do now. Jen doesn't want to go to the police because she'd feel guilty having her arrested over this, but my sisters and I want to convince her too, and I'd at least want documentation in case something happens in the future. Z clarification and some background on my relationship with my parents. Some people were asking questions about my mom and my decision not to be open with Jen about my relationship with my parents. I figure I could give some background on why we're so strained. Like some of you said, Mark was the golden child. Mark was my mom's baby boy and she didn't do much to try and hide it. They didn't spend much time with my sisters and I like normal parents did with their kids unless they had to, but they'd spend time with Mark as often as possible like taking him out shopping while we stayed with a sitter, or bringing him home his favorite food and toys from the store when they'd shop alone. He usually got better things compared to the rest of us like new expensive clothes while ours were thrifted or new toys just for him compared to old toys we had to share with each other. If my sisters and I got gifts, they were for us to share, but my mom made it pretty clear that Mark's things were only for him and we shouldn't touch it. When Mark would screw up, I'd get punished for not being a good role model and showing him the proper way to behave. For example, Mark went through a phase of breaking his toys and I got the beating because obviously he learned the behavior from me. When he was 8, Mark got in trouble at school for trying to push a kid down the stairs. I was grounded for two weeks and told to apologize to the kid for not teaching my brother right. When I turned 13, I pushed for my parents to start giving me an allowance. They agreed as long as I did household chores like mowing the lawn, taking out the trash, raking leaves, etc. It was usually somewhere around $25 a week to help me start saving. Mark saw that I was getting money and he begged my parents for an allowance too. Instead of making him work, $10 of my allowance money was given to him each week because we were doing such a good job with our chores, that he never touched, whenever I asked him to help, he'd tell me it's not his job to do chores so why should he bother. It was around this time that I started really distancing myself from my brother. By the time I entered high school, we only talked to each other when we needed small favors or when we absolutely had to. I got my first job when I turned 17 because I wanted to finally get my own car and make money that they couldn't force me to give to Mark. My oldest sister Maggie helped me start my own bank account and showed me how to properly budget and save my money. I got my first car at 18 after all of my hard work. When Mark got his license, my parents asked me to let him use my car to get around and for extra practice behind the wheel. Reluctantly I agreed and for a while the arrangement was fine. Mark used my car when I didn't need it and helped maintain it pretty well. When he expressed wanting my parents to buy him his own car, my mom came to me and told me to give him my car because he needed it more. When I refused, she threatened to kick me out. We got in a fight that night which ended with her giving Mark my car and taking me to transfer ownership of it to him within the following few days. Since I didn't have anywhere else I could go at the time, I just sucked it up and signed it over. When I graduated high school, both of my parents skipped my graduation because Mark didn't want to sit in a long ceremony just to see me get a piece of paper, and my mom didn't want to leave him alone for the night. So I only had the support of my sisters and my aunt and uncle who wanted to take me out. They ended up having to bring me home at my parents' request because they made me dinner to make it up to me. It was a dinner I couldn't eat because my mom put shrimp and chicken on the same serving dish and I'm allergic to shellfish. My first year out of high school I worked two jobs to buy myself another car, and at the start of the new school year I moved away for college and cut contact with them. They, mostly my mom, tried to reach out for the first few months via social media and Sophie, but I never responded and I told Sophie she would be cut off too if she kept trying. When she couldn't get to me through Sophie, she tried going through my older sister Charlotte, and a few times through Maggie and Mark until I threatened to file a restraining order for harassment. It was a bluff because I had no idea how to do it, but it managed to scare her off and the most I got from her was happy holiday texts over the years. Around the time I moved back, Charlotte told me they had been seeing a family therapist, at Charlotte's request, and my parents wanted to apologize for their treatment of us. I was hesitant but I agreed as long as they would be genuine, and the reconciliation process started when I moved back home. That doesn't even scratch the surface of everything they put me through, and it took a lot for me to even begin to let them back into my life. When I met Jen, I wasn't sure where my relationship with her was going or where my relationship with my parents was going. I didn't want to mention my family at all mostly because I was ready to cut contact again if I needed to. 
Jen was understanding of it being a sore subject and didn't press for more. I hope this helps shed some light on some of the questions I've been seeing pop up. Update 4, I want to thank everyone who's taken the time to give me advice on what to do going forward and all the kind messages and comments I've gotten over the past few days and weeks. Jan and I have read the comments together and everything is appreciated. To answer the most common question about why I chose to reconnect after everything, the short answer is because I would do anything for my sisters. Charlotte wanted the entire family around and for the birth of her first child and to help her while she adjusts. She didn't want part-time aunts and uncles who would only visit her kid during birthdays and holidays. She was never the type to ask for much of anything growing up so when she asked if I would be willing to try for her, I agreed because it would make her happy. I also think part of me hoped that maybe they'd changed. I don't regret trying to reconcile either. My parents are still terrible but I met the love of my life so I call it a win. A few people wanted to know if there's an update so here we go. Sorry if it's a mess or confusing, a lot has happened. We filed a report with the police and were told that even though Jen doesn't want to pursue anything, it's not up to us to decide whether it goes further but they would keep our preference in mind. We provided some pretty decent evidence of the assault including pictures of Jen's face and texts with my mom and dad talking about what happened. We were advised to report and record any other incidents with my mom going further in case anything else happens. Considering where we live, I doubt it'll go anywhere but at least we have it on record. I got about 100 angry text messages that tell me they at least spoke with her regarding the incident. My mom tried to corner me leaving my job and screamed at me about trying to ruin her life. She kept screaming that I was an awful son for trying to get her arrested over a small misunderstanding and she didn't understand what she'd done to deserve being punished like this. I told her that if she didn't like being in legal trouble then she shouldn't have hit Jen. She demanded I tell the police to forget the report which I refused. I told her exactly what the officer said about it being out of my hands. She had a tantrum in the parking lot and hit me a few times, just on the chest and arm, before security intervened and dragged her off the property. I had to talk to my boss about the incident. Luckily she was understanding of everything going on after I explained what was happening. When I got home, I told Jen what happened. She was upset and asked that we discuss the plan with my family moving forward. It was a long talk, but we took the advice of some Redditors and decided to go completely no contact with my family aside from my sisters. We agreed that having them in my life is adding unnecessary stress for the both of us and we aren't even married yet. She told me she wanted to consider moving away and putting some distance between us and my family. She said that she tried to stay out of my family issues because it's not her place, but she refuses to put up with my mom and her behavior or my dad enabling her abuse. A lot more was said, too much to put in this post, but I agreed with her that they were more trouble than they're worth and I also don't want to put up with this anymore. I also agreed to go to therapy and she's helping me find a therapist. I decided to call my dad after our talk and let him know I would be going no contact. He didn't answer the first time I called so I left a message asking to have a long talk. When he called back, he asked if it was okay for my mom to be a part of the conversation. I told him it was okay since she needed to hear what I had to say too. The conversation went about as well as you could expect. I told them both that Jan and I are cutting them out of our lives. My dad demanded to know why I would do something like that after going through all the trouble of repairing our relationship. I told him that this entire thing with Mark has shown me that nothing is actually repaired between us and, as far as they're concerned, the world revolves around only around my mom and my little brother. I told them that their continued favoritism of Mark has brought our relationship to a point of no return and that I wasn't interested in holding on to a failing relationship. I told them that I agreed to reconcile for Charlotte's sake, but I don't appreciate all of the disrespect towards me and Jen, and that I wouldn't put up with it anymore for both of our sakes. To my mom specifically, I told her that I was tired of her using me as a scapegoat for her bad parenting and Mark's attitude. I also told her that I would never forgive her for what she did to Jen and what she did to me and my sisters growing up. She started to say how I should move on like my sisters have but I cut her off and told her that she should take their forgiveness and move on because she would never receive it from me, especially after everything she's done these last few weeks. She started crying and asking me how I could treat her like such a villain. I told her she could only be upset with herself because I've done nothing wrong. She cried harder and told me how much she regretted having me and how I've only tried to ruin her life. This started a heated argument between her and Jen once again and Jen told her in much more colorful words that she was disgusting, and plenty of other nice names, for saying something like that to me. I don't know if she left the room or just decided to shut up but my mom stopped talking when Jen was done speaking to her. My dad said he wasn't okay with being shut out of my life and he asked me to try to understand my mom's point of view. He said that she was also struggling because her kids were at odds and I was being unfair to punish her for her struggles with raising and caring for us. The last thing he said was that we were a family and I shouldn't let past mistakes stop us from moving forward together. I told him that the only person she ever cared for was Mark and herself and there was nothing he could say or do to make me change my mind. I told him that it was up to him whether to keep my number but I would be blocking him and my mom everywhere and I wouldn't be reaching out again, then I hung up. Afterward, I sent a long email with a link to my posts attached to my entire family uninviting everyone except my aunt and uncle and my sisters to the wedding. I hadn't cried in a long time but Jen held me while I cried after writing the email and she assured me we would be okay. My sisters also reached out to me after reading the email. I apologized to Charlotte for not being able to continue reconciling like she wanted but she told me it was okay and it's not my fault I had to cut them off again. The response from my family has been pretty mixed. 
Some are angry I aired out family issues on a public internet forum while others are pissed at my parents because they never knew it was this bad. The last person I talked to about everything was Mark. He asked if I was cutting him off too and I told him I wasn't but I wouldn't be going out of my way to reach out to him either. He didn't argue and just wished me the best with the wedding and we haven't spoken since. Right now, Jan and I are looking for a new place to stay. The plan is to move closer to Jen's brother. He lives about three hours from where we are now and Jan and I like the city he's in. I spoke to my boss about transferring and Jan is looking into the option of working 100% remotely or possibly finding a new job. And once again our venue's changed. Since the guest list is significantly smaller, my future brother-in-law is considering letting us use his lake house for our wedding. I don't plan to post any more about this unless the sky falls, at least not until the wedding, because I want to move on with life, but I want to thank you all for your comments and advice. Story 2 I told the truth about what my ex did to me 10 years ago, and now his proposal is off, his future in-laws cut him off, and somehow I'm the one being blamed for ruining his life. A little backstory is needed, so please stick with me here. Growing up, I, 27 female, had a childhood friend named Angie, 27 female, who was as close to me as a real sister. We'd spend entire weekends at each other's place, celebrated family events etc. from 6 years old till 18 years old. I even lived at her place in second grade while my parents went to a nasty divorce. I learned to speak some Russian, as she is Russian and she learned to speak some Spanish. Needless to say, her older brother and little sister were like a family to me. During our teenage years she had her two male best friends, one whom she started dating and another one, Nico, now 29, who was Russian as well, whom I started dating at 17. Growing up I had issues with a heart condition. I won't bore you with the details but I had to take a lot of meds, but got healthier starting from 16. I didn't have to take them daily but only when my heart rate became irregular, but then immediately, as it would become extremely painful, my heart would cramp and I would start to hyperventilate. All my friends knew this, Nico included, and that I would black out if my meds got taken with alcohol. I didn't smoke much or drink much growing up as a result, since I was worried about my health and only did drink at home or in a safe setting, legal drinking age is 16 here, and I only drank wine or beer if at all. I had my first time with Nico at 17 and when my parents stayed at a retreat two weeks later, he came over to have a date night. I did drink one glass of wine, but started having health issues later, resulting in me taking my meds and being unconscious. I was a bit sore the next morning but didn't think much about it. Two weeks later, I'm informing Nico that I'm late on my period and he starts to panic, then he just blurts out, confessing he made love with me while I was unconscious that one night. We made love before, so he didn't think much about it. Apparently he didn't have a rubber but since I was on the pill, he figured it was alright, and he also didn't finish in me, but in a tissue. I felt violated and disgusted by myself. I didn't know how to describe this and only told Angie about it. I was another mess for a few years, and wasn't able to make love again until two years later. I didn't remember any of it, but was too ashamed to go to my mom or anybody else. I didn't think of it as rope back then, I was too young to really understand what and how I was violated and Angie told me it's alright, I should break up if I feel bad about it, but we were in a relationship and didn't make love before. I broke up with him the following day, and apparently he cried about his broken heart to her. As Nico and Angie were close and hanging out together a lot, they started dating a few months afterwards, and I had to see him every time when visiting her. I told her I'm not able to see him, but she didn't understand where I'm coming from. The contact stopped and we haven't texted or seen each other in years. I still followed her and her family and saw that her brother is expecting his first child. As I was extremely close with her family I just commented on the Insta post expressing my gratitude when he reached out to me. I missed his wedding but he wanted to ask if I would be interested in joining the baby shower as it's been years and we've been extremely close before. He told me I was like a third little sister. I just asked if Nico will be attending as well, as Angie and him have been dating for 9 years now, and he said yes. I didn't elaborate much but just expressed, that I'll send a small present if he can give me his current address but won't be attending. He kept on pestering me what exactly happened all those years ago and why I'm not in their lives anymore. Angie told her family I'm not able to see her with an ex of mine, but her brother thought there's more behind it. This is when I think I could be the jerk. I told him the truth, about what happened back then. And while I didn't know it at 17, I know now, that this was rope and I named it as such. I didn't receive any message back from him but a few days later Angie reached out to me, furious. Nico had planned to propose during the baby shower, but Angie's brother is against it now, having learned why I stopped the contact. She loves Nico and will stay with him, but by doing so, her brother said she is no longer a part of his life, as he doesn't want his little baby girl in the same family as a ropist. Since then I've been getting messages from old high school acquaintances, telling me I should have ignored it, and not told anybody. Since I didn't speak up back then I lost the right to do so now, and am a horrible person for ruining somebody's life over some stuff he did 10 years ago when he himself was a child as well. Am I truly the wrong for speaking up? Update 10 days later, first of all, I am immensely thankful for all the people who took the time to not only read through my story, but also comment. I read every single comment and try to respond to as many as possible. It gave me a little bit of hope of compassion for victims of rope and also the courage to not cave to the backlash I received. Mental update, 
Reading all the messages defending my choices on speaking up made me realize how insecure I was on what I am allowed to do and how much I was trying to make it right to other people besides myself, this especially included Nico and Angie. All of you are right, if Nico had changed he would have apologized, reached out or tried to make amends in some way. Either when word got to him from his brother-in-law or at some earlier point in his life. My former best friend Angie should have been able to feel some sort of compassion if she had any respect for me as a human being or the time we spend together. Her reactions showed that I shouldn't hesitate on my actions. I went to therapy from 21 onwards and thought I moved on from the rope as best as I could, but I realized how ashamed I still am almost 10 years later about an incident that wasn't my fault at all. I was ashamed to speak up back then and afraid that people around me would look differently at me. And somehow I still felt bad about speaking up today, so I'm trying to own what happened to me now and not apologize for other people's behaviors, especially as they don't even show me respect. What happened since then, I archived every nasty message I got on WhatsApp so I wouldn't have to read them, but would have the proof if needed at a later point. Angie's mom called me the following day of the incident, crying. I shouldn't have answered the phone but during the 10 years of friendship I saw her as an aunt, almost a second mom. She always joked that while her children would run around the house doing whatever, I would always take the time to drink a tea and talk with her, showing her more love and time than her actual children. While she said she's sorry for what has been and for what I went through as a child, she couldn't believe that I would ruin Angie's happiness over something like that. With Angie's brother refusing to have Nico as part of the family and Angie standing by Nico's side it's divided their family and she is heartbroken. She has grown to love Nico like family as well and has known him for nothing more than a considerate young man who she knows will make her daughter happy. It wasn't nasty names or angry talk, just a heartbroken mother who faked to acknowledge my pain and saw the fault in me. Angie's mom tried to get me to apologize or to take it back but I refused as I don't see the fault in me. With everything that has happened I believe that Nico hasn't changed and is just hiding it better somehow. He can see how people are standing by him and supporting his behavior so he won't have to change. And that is something I didn't want to indulge. Angie's mom not even once used the word rope and I tried to correct her every time she talked about it, trying to name it for her to understand better but she would just start sobbing more and it didn't make sense for us to continue to talk. Angie's mom used to be in contact with mine for some time, and she reached out to her after our talk. I was afraid that my mom would find out, since she's from a more conservative background. We had a long talk and I didn't get to see her, physically, yet, but she apologized for not being there for me or not making me feel like I can talk to her. I tried to calm her as best as I could, but when she asked me if my current partner knows I was used like that, I got angry. She was scared my partner would leave me if he found out, implying it was something that made me less precious or appealing. When she asked me to keep it a secret from our family abroad and in our country, I hung up. She was acting exactly the way I was afraid she would, as if it's something shameful. It was especially hard as I'm trying my best to move away from the feeling of shame. She has since apologized, but it's clear that her view of me has changed. I don't yet know how to deal with it, but that's something to worry about in the next few weeks. As some of you suggested, I wrote Angie's brother, Sven, again and apologized for the mess, but I'm glad that it is out in the open and how proud I am that he's defending his family. I asked if his old email is still working as I would just send a gift card. He didn't respond, but I got a message from his wife two days ago. She thanked me for speaking up and informing them about Nico. There were apparently had a few moments that made her uncomfortable, some jokes Nico made, and in retrospective she can see why. Sven apparently informed her the moment he got my initial text, and both of them have since seen Angie but not Nico. She refuses to be in the same room or house as him, and same goes to their unborn daughter. Sven and Angie's mom has been at their place multiple times to beg to forgive Nico, and Sven Kate the little. Angie and Nico will get married, Sven will attend but his wife will not. He is allowed in the family but not in contact with either Sven's wife or daughter. Those restrictions are not for Angie. Sven was suffering trying to ease his mother's worries and is not able to take a stand and cut them out completely. This is a compromise they made without his wife's approval, and she told me she's trying her best to cut them out of their life indefinitely. She wanted to move back, closer to her family as well and thinks this is a perfect opportunity but isn't sure if she can follow through. His wife told me she's terribly sorry for all the issues that came my way and it has been a lot trying to handle the situation on their side. Sven knows it's not my fault but he doesn't want contact. It's hard for him to talk or see my name because even though he knows I'm not the guilty party, in some way I was the bearer or bad news and he sees me as the start of all this drama. She told me a few times that neither believe I'm the bad guy, they just are tired with everything and it's just been extremely hard on them. That's all that has happened so far. I am frustrated about how everything came to be. It feels like Nico will just continue with his life without having to be remorseful. I didn't want him to suffer, but I think some part of me wanted to at least receive some kind of apology for all the suffering I went through afterwards. I'm having to deal with my mother and her changed shameful view on me, and even though I'm happy it's all out it's extremely hard to stand by my choices. My partner and my best friends both have been my shoulder to cry on during this ordeal. Especially my best friend was enraged for me, and I am extremely graceful to have both by my side. Right now I'm just emotionally drained, but I'm sure it will be better once a few weeks passes. Story 3
My family cut me off after I hurt my brother, but now they've suddenly forgiven me five years later and want to reconnect, and I'm not sure I want them back because my life has gotten so much better without them. So my, 25 male, family completely cut ties with me at the end of 2015. Things had been tense for a while leading up to that, but the breaking point came when I went to my parents' house for Christmas. One night, I drank way too much and got into a heated argument with my younger brother. The argument spiraled out of control and turned physical. I was 19 at the time, and he was only 15. Unfortunately, he got the worst of it. That night changed everything. It wasn't just the fight itself, but the damage it did to my relationship with my family. After that, they pretty much shut me out completely. Without going into massive detail, he had said something which struck a nerve, I won't say what because it's quite personal, and not really relevant here, and I ended up injuring him quite badly. There was a question of potentially involving the police, but nothing ever happened in regards to that, in the end they all just told me they wanted nothing to do with me anymore. Which is fair enough, I was completely in the wrong and they were absolutely right to want to cut me off, I'm not complaining about that in the slightest. I had already moved out by that stage so it wasn't a case of kicking me out, it was more just telling me to never come back. Again, I can't blame them for this at all, and would be surprised if you could either. This post isn't about me complaining about being cut off or pretending that I didn't deserve it, because I did, and I'm not trying to play the victim here. I genuinely regret what I did and have spent time trying to self-improve in the wake of it. It was quite difficult for me to come to terms with this for the first year or so afterwards. The only person in my family I had any contact with was my mom. We never really spoke in depth, just small updates, wishing each other happy birthday and things like that. Honestly though, after that first year, things have gotten so much better for me. I stopped drinking, which was the root of a lot of my problems. I got my head down and ended up doing very well at university, I've now got a job that I love, and I've been with my girlfriend for the best part of four years, and things are absolutely great. To be brutally honest, I don't miss my family one bit. My relationship with them hadn't been great for a while before the fight, and as far as I was concerned I didn't miss them and they didn't miss me, and being on a non-contact basis with all of them apart from occasional contact with my mum was for the better. However, over the last few months, my mum began messaging me much more frequently, and asking more personal questions about my life, my work, my relationship etc. I thought it was just boredom on her part, but she maintained it for a while, and began to introduce the idea of me coming back to visit her at some point, which I always shrugged. She started to persist with it, and then yesterday it all came to a head when she added me to a WhatsApp group chat with the rest of the family. I was then told how they had all come to a family decision that five years was enough, that my brother had found it in his heart to forgive me for what happened and that they wanted me to come over at some point to catch up on lost time, these are all quotes from what they sent me. I didn't say much, I just said I wanted time to think. I'm quite torn on this now. Part of me feels like I'm obliged to go along with it. They cut contact with me because of my own actions, and if my brother's forgiven me and wants to re-establish contact with me then it's my duty to do so. On the other hand, I feel like since contact was cut my life improved a lot. My relationship with them had been on a downward slope for a fair bit of time beforehand, and I just haven't found myself missing any of it. That's why I'm asking for advice. Would you say that I'm obliged to go and re-establish contact because it was my fault that contact was cut, or do you think it would be acceptable for me not to do so? Update 4 days later, I wasn't initially planning on doing an update for that post, but the amount of responses I got from it were absolutely unprecedented so I decided it was right of me to do one. I'll start off by saying that soon after that post was written I phoned my brother. We talked for a few minutes about how things were going, and then I apologized to him for what happened back in 2015. He didn't specifically say he forgave me, but he was amicable and said that he appreciated me doing it. I'm glad I did it. I know five and a half years is a long time to have gone without doing it, but that was the first vocal conversation I'd had with him since the family cut contact. He told me that the whole incident hadn't left him with any lasting mental or physical damage, and while I have no way of knowing whether that's completely true, I was glad to hear it. I don't want to make it about myself, but it did also feel like a bit of a weight lifted off my shoulders. In terms of the actual resumption of contact, it won't be happening for now. After a few days of talking to the family as a collective in the group chat, which I have now left, as well as some individual conversations with different members, I told them that I was happy to increase contact with them through messaging, but that as things stand I didn't think resuming face-to-face -face contact would be right, and that I wasn't going to do it. As I stated in the initial post, I was already having severe doubts about it, and the conversations I had with them pretty much made my mind up for me. I'll list a few examples of it here. 1. Much of the discussion I had with family was done through a group chat in which I was added to by my mom. This group chat also contained my dad, and my two brothers. The group chat was titled Reunion so it was pretty obvious what their intentions were. 2. The initial language used by them when I was added bothered me. I gave some examples of it in the original post, things like my mum saying my brother had found it in his heart to forgive me and them coming to a family decision that five years was enough. It made it seem like there was no chance of it being a normal family relationship at all, and that I would always be indebted and subservient to them in some form for that. As I said, I had no issue with being cut off and felt they were pretty justified in doing so, but that doesn't mean I would be prepared to come back and be in a constant state of owing one, and likely being made to feel pressured to do things for them because they were oh so kind to find it in their hearts to let me back. 3. This sort of language continued throughout me being in that group chat. 
Some more examples were being told that I had lots of work to do if we wanted a normal relationship, notice that they didn't say we, and also was also compared to the prodigal son multiple times by my, very religious, parents, which just made me think they were doing it for their own spiritual reasons rather than actually being interested in having me back as part of the family. The final nail in the coffin was that when I specifically expressed doubts about it, my dad said after all you did to us as a family, we've decided to let you back in and then pretty much went on to tell me that I should be biting their hands off for the chance to make amends, and that I was ungrateful for not doing so. I told them I was backing out of it pretty soon after that. A few of the replies to my original post asked if any of them needed an organ. I initially brushed this off as a joke, but after some of the conversations I had, I now genuinely think it's possible that that's true. My girlfriend is also a big reason why I was initially having doubts, and a couple of things that were said by my dad completely reinforced these. I 100% know that he would dislike her. Not through any fault of her own, but mainly because he has some very old-fashioned views on women, and he's also quite racist. She is only half white, and when I was younger my dad made it pretty clear that he didn't want me to date outside of my race. In the group chat, he described her as my exotic girlfriend and made a couple of very stereotypical assumptions on her based on her race, which made it pretty clear to me that he still found it wrong and abnormal of me to be with a girl who isn't completely white. If I resumed a somewhat normal fatherson relationship with him, I'm almost certain that he'd try to interfere in some way, and would at the very least encourage me to end things with her. It's not like I've only been seeing her for a month either, we've been together for almost four years and have discussed marriage, so she absolutely takes priority over the family. Those are the main reasons behind me choosing not to go down the route of face-to-face contact with the family. There are a few other things too, such as the fact that they seemed awfully interested in grandchildren who didn't even exist, and also that I suspected that it was all my mum's doing and that the rest of the family weren't that interested. I'm fairly sure she was feeding the others lines, my 14-year-old brother was typing an awful lot like my 45-year-old mum, let's put it that way. With all these factors combined with my initial doubts about it made my mind up that I wasn't going to resume face-to-face contact. I messaged them telling them that while I did appreciate them trying to get me to do so, I just had too many doubts about it to go and start meeting with them face to face or going to their house. I did say that they all had my number now, and were free to text me at any point if they wanted to talk, and then left the group chat. I know they've all read it, because they've all been online since I sent it, but I haven't had a single message from any of them. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if I ever will. And yet, I can't really say I feel that sad about it. I'm glad I've apologized to my brother, and if that's the end of all contact with them then so be it, it is what it is. My mum was contacting me every day in the months leading up to her deciding I should start seeing the family again, now it's beginning to seem to me that she was doing so because she wanted me to return to them on my hands and knees, groveling and begging for forgiveness. Things certainly began to turn a bit sour when it became clear that I wasn't going to do that. Perhaps she sees it as the final betrayal, and wants nothing more to do with me now. At the end of the day, I'm never going to pretend that they were for a second wrong for cutting contact with me. They did it to protect their 15-year-old son, and I completely understand it. Ultimately though, I grew up, ended my addiction and built a life for myself off the back of it without them involved in my life. It's very likely that they still have this image of the 19-year-old who turned completely white when he was told they wanted nothing more to do with him, but that really isn't me anymore. When they initially kicked me out, I felt like I needed them even though we didn't have the greatest relationship, five years on from that, I certainly don't think I do anymore. I apologize to anyone who read the initial post and wanted me to go and see them in person again, but this is just how things have turned out. Once again, thank you to everyone for offering support and advice, and I hope that anyone reading this who has their own issues with family and estrangement is able to navigate them, and build a relationship back if they so wish. Story 4 I ditched my boyfriend's trip after his friends turned my bathroom break into a public spectacle, and now he's blowing up my phone acting like I'm the one who ruined the trip. Maybe I should have left him with at least my dignity. Okay, strap in because this is the most bizarre and embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me. So I, 26 female, went on a ski trip with my boyfriend, 28 male, and his friends. It's their annual trip and the first time I went. We have been together for two years. The group that goes is him and five of his friends, four guys and one girl, all in their late 20s. I have met two of the guys before but the other two and the girl I've only met briefly over FaceTime. They knew I was coming on the trip. So they VRBO this house about 10 minutes from ski resort. We are a few days in for this weekly trip and everything is fine. The only problem has been the bathroom doors don't seem to lock, important for later. There had been some near embarrassing moments but nothing major. Until day four of seven. I'm not a huge drinker especially around people I don't know well. I wanted to just nurse a drink while we all talked and they drank. We haven't been eating the best and have pizza before this. My stomach was bothering me so I excused myself to the bathroom on the main floor. I should have gone in the one upstairs but you know what they say about hindsight. So I'm on the toilet, obviously taking a poop, when the doorknob starts to move. I'm in here, but his female friend comes in anyway. I don't know if because it was me or she was too drunk to hear or care. She honestly smells what's going on and makes a big ruckus to the rest of the group that I'm pooping. I told her to please get out as calmly as I could because I was starting to get very upset. She was making a big deal over a normal bodily process. So she goes to leave the bathroom but basically throws open the bathroom door to do so. Three of the four guys are there in the hallway and she's exposed me to them. Now I'm very upset and mortified. I yelled at her to get out and to shut the door behind her. 
They all are standing in the doorway and not listening to me. My boyfriend notice what's going on and comes into the bathroom. I think he's going to yell at his friends but instead, the drunk jerk. Just comments on how bad it smells in the bathroom. He leaves but doesn't take his friends with him. They continue to point and laugh while I'm in a vulnerable state. I think they were making potty jokes. All while I'm sat on the toilet, pants at my ankles, keeping my knees locked shut. I start screaming at this point to get the hell out of the bathroom and shut the damn door over and over. I'm actually crying at this point because I'm so mortified and I've never been in such a bizarre situation. My crying and screaming finally got the drunkard's attention. She shuts the door behind her. Now I'm breaking down in the bathroom, still crying and trying to get sorted so I can be done and wash my hands and get the hell out of this room. While washing my hands all I can think is that my boyfriend didn't help at all. I know they're drunk but I don't think that's much of an excuse. They've just been drinking beer and I think he'd had four so far. I am absolutely mortified and decide to just go into the bedroom. However, when I come out of the bathroom, still crying a bit by the way, all six of them start howling with laughter and pointing at me. It's like one of those crazy nightmares where everything seems more dramatic than real life should be. I just look at my boyfriend, meet his eyes and everything to show how upset I am and they don't stop. I go upstairs to our room and pack. I can't go through three more days with these people, and I don't want to sleep in the same bed as my drunk boyfriend. Drunk or not, they're being incredibly disrespectful and childish. I don't think I've ever been so embarrassed. I finish packing, change my flight to the next morning, and order an Uber to go to the airport hotel. I gather all of my things and walk downstairs to get my coat and leave. They all start laughing when I come back in the room but my boyfriend finally notices I have my bags with me. I silently put my coat on. My boyfriend yells where the hell are you going? Airport is all I say. Now he is yelling and they're all yelling. Saying it was just in good fun and I should lighten up. Have another beer, etc. No one apologizes, not even my boyfriend. He just seems so mad that I'm leaving. I tell him I'll see him in a few days and walk out to my Uber. Once I'm finally in my hotel room later, I curl up in bed and cry. I definitely did not see this being the way my trip ended. Once I flew home the next morning and got back to my apartment, I had so many texts, missed calls and voicemails from my boyfriend. They ranged from apologetic to angry to accusing, as if I did something wrong by going to the freaking bathroom. I haven't responded yet and he comes home in two days. I haven't even read all of the texts because it got more upset. How the heck am I supposed to face these people again? It just seems like the most bizarre and surreal experience. I think I'm more upset that my boyfriend did nothing, even when I was screaming and crying. He didn't stop me from leaving. He didn't follow me out. He just yelled at me and asked me where the hell I was going. How could he not make sure I'm okay? Even now, I was upset enough to leave and his texts that I did read are not supportive. No apology. Basically I put a damper on the trip. I'm dramatic. It wasn't that bad, but I made a terrible impression with his friends. What about their impression to me? Because I'm having some pretty strong thoughts right now? Right now I still have a boyfriend. That might be changing in a few days. I love him but do not like his reaction to all this. Why the heck am I getting blamed? I did not receive this type of deal breaker. Update, 4 months later, hello fellow Reddit people. I wanted to update earlier but there's been a lot going on. So my boyfriend came home a day after I did. He called me before his flight and asked to come over to my apartment when he got back. I agreed. I needed a flipping explanation for their bizarre behavior before I could decide what to do in our relationship. He's been wonderful and respectful for 2 years and then that? At that point, I decided I didn't want to see his friends again, they're very unimportant to me. So he gets here, I let him in and right away I see he is noticeably nervous and twitchy. He sits on my couch, I sit separately on my recliner. He blurts out are we over? Depends on what you have to say. Unless you want it to be over? He says no before I finish. Okay then. So I tell him to explain what the heck happened. So, he and his genius friends took LD and shrooms, female friend took shrooms only, the guys were a mix of both with alcohol. My boyfriend said he took LD only. I flipped a bit. Why the heck didn't he tell me? What if one of them had a really bad reaction or trip, shouldn't the one person who didn't take substances know they did to be able to keep them safe? I've done it and wouldn't have judged them. He knew I tried in college and had a bad time, like nightmare fuel bad. No real answer on that. It is his decision to take something like that but I am more upset that they weren't really safe about it. That wasn't okay to admit that. He agreed that was a dumb decision. He said it's been about six years since they last tried it. I asked him to explain his ah behavior the next morning then. He says he and his guy friends didn't remember the reality of what happened but, shocker I know, their female friend B did. The beach that laughed when explaining it later that afternoon. The guys were horrified. My boyfriend is rethinking friendship with her. I said I never want to see her again. Not an ultimatum, just a fact. So once he knew he was embarrassed, and didn't want to apologize over phone or text so he came home early. He took the time to get his itinerary and thoughts sorted he says. He asked for my side of it and I just let him read my first post, it was too hard to say. He gave me a huge hug after, apologizing between forehead and cheek kisses. We agreed to work through it. I could practically smell his relief, he thought I was done with him, and I did too before we talked and got an explanation. 
We set boundaries, no secrets, even if we think the other is going to be upset. Better to talk through things than have issues later. My main sticking point was I didn't want that be in our lives. The fact that she acted that way when she was mostly sober and could recant the entire thing while laughing is unacceptable. I don't know what kind of personality trait or disorder makes that possible but I don't give a damn, she's disgusting. He understood and messaged the guys in front of me. He told them I was giving him a second chance and he explained what happened. They asked if they could FaceTime us later to apologize. We said yes but without B. They understood and agreed. Their apologies later that night were all very sweet and genuine. My boyfriend spoke with B a few days later and then blocked her, all while beside me. These last couple of months, he has really stepped up and shown me how important I am to him and how much he loves me. We've both upheld our side of the boundary of no secrets. It's actually been awesome to just talk through any issues, feelings, etc. We were great before this bizarre incident but things are strangely better now. I wouldn't have thought that when I wrote my first post. We're talking about moving in with one another next year. B did try to reach out several times. She was screaming that I needed to take it down. It's not like anybody has any idea who she is in real life, for F's sake, the drama. My boyfriend's friend group has all shut her out since the trip. Apparently, she's always had an excuse about why a new girlfriend of theirs didn't like her or misheard her. She's created more issues than they realized during their 14-year friendship. My boyfriend knows I have no issues with him having friends of any gender but agrees we don't need her stereotypical female best friend behavior in our lives. I don't know if she has feelings for any of them or just likes their attention but whatever it is, no longer my problem. I don't know if this is the update you hoped for or if you all were rooting for my boyfriend to get dumped hard but please know I'm genuinely happy with my outcome. Thanks for taking our own crazy trip with my story and update. Had to make light of it. You all have been wonderfully sweet and supportive, it was incredibly appreciated. Story 5 I dumped my girlfriend over a creepy joke she made regarding our intimate life, and now I can't tell anyone I know without looking like a psycho. My, 23 male, ex-girlfriend, 25 female, and I were together for just under 8 months, and like, we clicked. Got along like a house on fire from the moment we met. We had a lot in common from our morals, to our goals, to our taste in music. My family? They love her. Probably more than they do me. My mom wanted a daughter so bad she couldn't stand it growing up, she had four sons before she just gave up. It was probably three months ago now that we had been on the couch while I watched a movie and she scrolled TikTok. Not a TikTok hate post, scrolling can be fun, I'm just more of a YouTube guy. Speaking of showing me videos, she showed me one of a man holding his son, and dancing to a song. She laughed and said something about how good I would look as a dad, which was pretty weird considering as far as I knew, both of us were child-free by choice. God knows I am, I tried to take it as a joke, and mentioned that it was too bad, so sad, she would never know. I thought she would respond with something about how there's nothing sad about avoiding it or something. She has never given me indication before this that she wanted children. And she started giggling this like, evil giggle, and said something like I don't know, it only takes one broken rubber. In this like sing-song voice that I'm not even joking gave me freaking goosebumps. The implication was clear in her tone. Like, was she making a joke about poking holes in cops? To me? For real? I tried to laugh it off, but it made me so damn uncomfortable. Like skin crawling levels of skeeve the fuck out. And after that my intimate interest for her was entirely gone, it's like I processed her as a threat or something. To be entirely honest? My libido in general is entirely gone. Still hasn't come back. It feels like it's hibernating or something, until the scary lady is gone. I know what you're thinking, why didn't you communicate? And I tried, like a couple times, but when she said oh my god, I was kidding you big baby but never denied that the joke was about that. I dropped it, and stopped bringing it up. I didn't think it was worth the fight at that point, because while I still do care about her, like, a lot, I do not feel comfortable even going to sleep around her, and there is no way that is gonna mesh with a healthy relationship. If there's no trust, there's no relationship, that's how I feel, right? So I broke up with her, and when I told her, I said it was because I really needed to focus on myself. I didn't see a point in telling her then, it would've just pissed her off. As is, she seemed to take it in stride, not angry, or concerningly upset, so that's good. My family is even more heartbroken about this than I am, and I haven't been handling it well either. They've been begging me to reconsider, but there's no way I'm doing that. And there's no chance I'm telling them the whole story, especially my mom. She'd lose it, she's constantly asking for grandchildren. Even my dad, who doesn't really care about that and knows he's more likely to get grandkids from my younger siblings, would probably tell me I'm overreacting. So, they got the same story I told her. It's frustrating because I know, logically, it's no big deal and even kind of a joke, but at the same time, it's been upsetting and honestly kind of sad. I know I'm overreacting, but in the moment it felt like my only option, and I really don't want to take it back even if I am. I know you may think I'm paranoid, and I probably am, but I just could not stop thinking about it. After she told that joke, I think it was gonna end one way or another, so I'm glad it ended on decent terms instead of trying to stay and fix everything until I hated her. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, but like I said, no one to talk to about this because being unreasonable in real life is like a criminal arrest and I'm trying to avoid another of that particular black mark on my reputation. Anyway, off to research vasectomies because I will not be entering another relationship, or becoming any kind of active with anyone until then. Edit to add, I was clear, from the very beginning. 
and from what she had told me she was on the same page. I would never have dated her for 8 months if I thought she wanted kids, because I wouldn't want to waste someone's time like that. If she wanted kids she could have just said so instead of whatever that was. Also, someone asked me if I was responsible for taking care of my siblings growing up. I am the eldest and the next oldest is 16. You would be correct that this is a big reason that I don't want children. My dad and I get along okay now, but my mom and I still fight about it a lot because the way she sees it, it was my responsibility to take care of my brothers the way I did, and it's just the way things are. Apparently when I have kids I'll know. My mother had been a stay-at-home mom, but I still remember each time she got pregnant the way my list of crap would grow. By the time I was in middle school I was in charge of the youngest two anytime I was home, and if they got into anything or caused trouble, it was my ass that was grass, and mom's belt and dad's board were the lawn mower. Edit, I also I want to defend my mother, just a little or maybe why I haven't went no contact. The reason she thinks it's the responsibility of the oldest, is because that is how she, an eldest sibling herself, was raised. On top of that, I do think that she suffered pretty heavily from PPD during this time. I don't think my mother is some heartless monster or even a lazy parent, I think she was going through a hard time mentally and handled it the best she knew how, which was to lean on someone she shouldn't have, which is me. I just want to add this because this post has a lot of attention and I don't want anyone to think poorly of her for something that was out of her control. I don't blame my brothers for any of this. Hell, we joke around about it. I still talk to and see them regularly and we actually have a trip planned to go fishing out of state in a couple months. I love them more than anything, so I get a little defensive when people start acting like they know anything about them or me. I know I should work on that too, but it's a problem. Rude people man. They get to me. I know I should go to therapy, and I've tried, but there aren't many options without a waitlist near me, so I'm kind of at a standstill. The fact of it is, even if the therapist changed my fears, I know what I want from life and it isn't children. I've done my time changing diapers and such and I really don't want to go back to the most miserable time in my life. Before anyone asks, yes, my ex knew all of this. Update 2 months later, well, I never ever thought I would update, but I have one lol. Like I thought I had lost the password to this account and everything, but it was saved in the notes on my laptop. This isn't much of an update, but I can say that I did end up telling my friends more about the breakup, after I found out my ex is trying for a baby with her new boyfriend, who also happens to be her ex. Also I wasn't stalking her to get this information, I live in a small town, and two of my friends came to me and told me. They said they didn't want me to find out from someone else, but I didn't really care outside of the relief that now I was sure that she wasn't pregnant during the breakup, something that had been giving me nightmares. They calmed down. Apparently both of them thought I would react badly to the information and spiral or something. Whatever. I know a lot of people said I had taken a joke and overreacted, was a cruel-hearted and evil misogynist trying to control her body and everything else, but this just confirmed to me that she was never joking. I mean, it's been a little over two months since the breakup, and she's trying to have a baby. I'm not angry at her anymore, not at all, in fact I'm happy for her, because if this is what she wants good for her. I just wish she could have told me sooner, so as to not waste either of our times. I've been working on getting a vasectomy, but as of now it hasn't happened yet. But as I mentioned in the last post I won't be intimately or romantically active to any degree with anyone but my hand until that's completed. I think I'm lightly traumatized this is a joke, you can laugh. What else? Uh. I'm thinking about getting a new dog? I have nothing else to add here, but, thanks anyway. OP on his final thoughts of getting a vasectomy. OP, yeah, I explained it in the last post to a degree, but I didn't really get into my medical anxiety. I have it really bad, and even when I made my last post I knew I was going to have to get one, because I realized trusting someone else with my future, no matter how trustworthy they may seem, isn't enough. I have never, and never intend to make love without a rubber. Even after the vasectomy, and every woman I've been with intimately has expressed that they are also child-free, and are on birth control of some kind. I am not into taking chances. I wouldn't mentally be able to handle having a child, and I would be a terrible father. I knew it was my time to take it into my own hands after last time, but was still extremely nervous, to the point that I was considering becoming celibate, just to avoid the possibility altogether. It was actually the men, and wives of men on Reddit who reached out after my last post, and explained that they understood the nerves, and they were natural, but that it really wasn't as scary, or as painful as it sounds. I am very thankful for that, because it helped me to get up the balls, pun not intended, to bring it up with my doctor and start the process. Some even gave me advice on how to deal with the healing process, which I have fully taken under advisement. I'm hoping that afterward I feel the same way they do, confused and frustrated with myself as to why I didn't do it sooner. Story 6. I overheard my fiancé and his family mocking me behind my back, calling me stupid for asking so many questions, but now the only thing I'm questioning is our future together. I, 23 female, am engaged to John, 24 male. We've been together for 5 years and we're planning to get married in July 2025. I always believed his family liked me since we've always gotten along very well. He has two older brothers, 26 and 29, who are both married, and I've been really excited about becoming part of the family. They've always been kind to me, and I genuinely felt like I was marrying into a great supportive group of people, and the idea of being part of such a close-knit family had me looking forward to the future even more. Some important information, about a year ago when I was scrolling on Instagram I, I saw a profile that was kind of cringy but in a cute way. It was an older woman's profile who shared inspirational quotes. I remember one particular post and it was something in the lines of, only stupid people pretend to know everything. Don't pretend. Just ask. 
Honestly, this quote changed me in a lot of ways. Before that, I was always worried that I might embarrass myself if I don't know something. And after reading that quote, I realized that if I always pretend that I know everything, then I'll miss out on actually getting to learn about things. So I decided to change my habits and start admitting that sometimes I genuinely don't know. Someone is talking about the war in Kosovo? Okay, sure, but first let me ask some questions so I can really understand what we're talking about here. And yeah, I ask a lot of questions sometimes. I sometimes even open the notes app on my phone and write in some questions that I later want to find answers to. These are my latest questions. 1. How does the time work in the black hole? 2. Why some snails have shells and others don't? 3. What food is okay for ducks? 4. How does the light bulb work, the old ones with gas inside them? 5. Does everyone see colors the same? And how can we be sure and know that? Sorry for the long introduction, but it was kind of necessary for understanding what kind of person I am. I know that sometimes I might come across as annoying, I get it. So his parents hosted a small barbecue last weekend only for the family. So it was the mom, 54 female, dad, 59 male, brothers and their wives. I was the last person who showed up because I had to work late. I entered the house and when I was walking towards the back of the house into the backyard I heard John's mom talking about me. To be honest she wasn't talking about me, more like mocking me. I heard her say in a high-pitched voice how does the sun work? Where should I put the fork? Why does nobody like me? How do I wipe my own butt? I just stood there. I had this sinking feeling. I couldn't move, so I just stood there. And I heard them all laughing. One of the wives said I actually don't mind her always asking questions, I think it's cute, and it made me feel hopeful that they will say something like yeah sure we're just playing, we love that. But none of them did. Instead the mom replied it's not cute. She's just stupid. After that they laughed again. I heard John laughing. My heart kind of broke in that moment because he didn't even say one positive thing. He didn't defend me. He just laughed. I quietly turned around and left the house. I texted John that I got sick and have to stay home. Now I'm wondering how I should approach this situation. We live together and I sleep in the guest bedroom for now and I use the excuse that I don't want him to get sick from being around me. I can't ignore him forever and I can't pretend to be sick anymore, because it's been too long. Maybe it was just a misunderstanding. I'm considering talking to them about this, but I'm also worried that they won't be honest with me. I can't marry him if he really thinks I'm stupid. But I also can't marry into a family who thinks so little of me. But maybe it was a joke and I shouldn't take it so seriously. I'm so torn apart and every day I convince myself a bit more that it's okay and sometimes we should all laugh about ourselves. Now I feel like I'm just going crazy. I would really appreciate some advice. Edit, there are many comments saying that they cannot stand people like me. I agree that sometimes I can be a bit too much with the questions, but with that being said I still think I'm within reason. I don't do it around people I just met, I rarely do it at parties or other gatherings. I usually do it with people who are close to me, who I think wouldn't judge me or with people who specifically have knowledge about something and are willing to share it. If I'm a part of a conversation, I'm not rude and I'm not interrupting, I usually just ask one or two questions. If a discussion is about the climate change I'm not asking about monkeys if you know what I'm saying. I'm also not a complete dummy. I don't ask questions which generally would be considered dumb to other people. Those I just write in the notes and check answers later in the internet. I'm capable of reading so I make good use of it. But after all, I guess I still do ask questions a lot. Update three days later. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to people who reached out to answer my questions about black holes, snails, ducks, light bulbs and other stuff. I would love to have you as my friends. For the other people who said I should just shut up, I don't really care if you find me annoying or hard to be around. I'm okay with that. I don't exist to please everyone. I'm just here for a good time, have my own interests and learn. I didn't expect my post to gain so much attention but I'm so grateful for the advice. Most of you told me to break up with him and at the very least confront him, so that's what I decided to do. You gave me a push and confidence to do it. But before I did that, I texted the wife of John's brother, the one who said she liked me asking questions. I asked her if we can meet up for coffee, and she said sure. We met and I didn't really see the point in pretending to her that I didn't hear their conversation. So after some small talk I just said I heard you all talking about me during the barbecue. She immediately got sad and said she feels embarrassed. She explained that it wasn't a joke, wasn't out of context, that it was just plain mean and hurtful. She said she's sorry for not defending me more, but I said that's it's okay and I understand. I told her that I don't blame her for anything at all, and just wanted to make sure that I understand the situation and see it for what it really was. And it really was laughing about me behind my back. Just straight up bullying from the family I saw myself marrying into. At this point I just had to confront John. In my last post so many comments were saying that he will probably try gaslighting me. And you were right. We were having dinner together for the first time since the barbecue happened, because before I tried my best to avoid him. Yes, I know, not very mature of me, but other than you guys I don't really have a strong support system. My family and best friends are hundreds of kilometers away. I only have two good friends here, I was so stressed I thought I'm going to pass out. My legs were shaking and I was terrified because I knew deep down that this is the moment when my five-year relationship goes down the drain. I look him in the eyes and ask how does the sun work? 
He looked confused, so I followed with where should I put my fork? Why does nobody like me? At this point realization hit him and he started nervously laughing. I said I was there and I heard them. After the initial shock passed, he got mad at me. He said it's rude to eavesdrop, and I said it's rude to bully people. He tried telling me that it was just a joke. That I shouldn't be so uptight. That it really was funny. I said that I didn't find it funny and went to the guest room to calm down. He started panicking. He was asking me to please talk to him. He was much more apologetic and said that he will be 100% honest with me. I asked if his mother made similar comments before the barbecue. He said yes. I asked him if he ever defended me. He said he tries to. I don't know if I believe him. He told me he loves me and respects me, and I don't know if I believe that either. I said that I love him too, but I need a break. He's all I ever known. He was my first and only partner. I have no outside perspective of this, I have no experience. I need a moment to think. I will be going to my friend's house for a while to think everything through. The apartment has his name on the lease anyway. After I gathered some of my things and left, he kept texting me non-stop. He tried calling but I didn't respond. I was very hurt because he tried to belittle my feelings and only later when he realized that I might break up with him, started apologizing. The next day I decided to give him another chance to explain himself and I came back to the apartment. He seemed very sad and tired. He said that he told his mother that I overheard them. I said I don't care. It's his time to step up and show me that he cares, I'm not interested in an apology from his mother. I'm already done with her. I can't put up with this behavior and mocking me like we're in primary school. I saw a comment saying that probably her ego is hurting. I think it's true. She never got the chance or never had desire to have an education. She is a very good homemaker but outside of that she doesn't have many interests of her own. If I'm asking her about making tomato soup she will be talking for 30 minutes lecturing me about adding enough sugar, but not too much. She will lecture anyone who is willing to listen. But anytime someone is talking about something she's not familiar with, she gets defensive and tries to imply that nobody cares about that and if it's not relevant to her, it shouldn't be discussed. Once again he tried telling me that I should relax because it was only a joke and at this point I had enough. I can't be with someone who jokes like this. I took off my ring and told him that his behavior is a joke and I can't be the punchline. I told him that I wish him and his family the best and to look in the mirror to check if they really are as superior as they think they are. I said I'm going to be back with my friends soon to pick up the rest of my stuff and to not contact me again unless it's about moving my things out. And that's that. I'm done. Thank you all for the advice. Without you I wouldn't have the confidence to leave this man. I know I deserve better. I can't be with someone who can't stand up for me, and I wouldn't be able to feel comfortable around his family, so I'm done with the relationship. I hope they will treat his next girlfriend better. There goes five years down the drain, but I think it was the right thing to do. I hope it was.